Hi guys, it's Matt here from Oathwire and I've got a special guest today. Uh, you may know him from, well, everything that Northstar does actually, uh, well, that he, he paints it. So uh, I'd like to introduce Kev uh, to everybody. Kev, say hi to everybody. Hi, um, hi, I'm Kev. Um, yeah, I don't quite paint everything for Northstar. It would be nice if I did, but <laughs> um, I, yeah, but, yeah, that's me. Um, okay, nice brilliant. To you guys here today. Yeah, no, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Nick reached out and uh, asked if you would like, because I was asking for some guests. Yeah. Uh, and that's, I really appreciate you coming on. So, just, you know, guys, Kev, uh, you, are you the official painter? Is that, uh, I guess I, I, kind, I kind of am. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it depends on the projects, obviously, because there's a lot to do. And I couldn't, I couldn't be like the official no. painter of everything because there's just too much stuff. No, well, no. you know, I would have to paint 24 hours a day yeah. and not do anything else because I do a lot of other stuff for Nick as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, so he's got an, you know, he's got a few really, you know, other painters that we really like to lean on, like Andrew Taylor and people like that, uh, Mystic yeah. Spirals. Uh, and particularly somebody like Andrew Taylor is he just does stunning work. He's done yeah. he's done the uh, I don't know if you've seen the silver bayonet stuff. I did, yeah. Which is another of Joe's games, obviously. Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> beautiful stuff. Yeah, and, uh, and he's done, I mean Napoleonics aren't my thing either, particularly, and, and Nick kind of knew that I think, and right. didn't want to take me off doing Star Grey stuff no. and Oathmark stuff. So, yeah. well. So got we'll just, to, you got Andrew to do them, and a fantastic job Andrew has done on them. I so. know it's very impressive. I, I love. I wish I had the abilities, but technique and uh, I'm an adequate painter, and I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah, there's something about Andrew's figures. There's a, I don't know. There's a, just a craftness about them. He does a lovely job. Yeah. I, I taught him all. I taught him all he knows. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well no to be fair he did used to work for me back about a thousand years ago when i was painting uh professionally on my own sort of thing all right and i got some other painters some young lads you know that i thought yeah. i could bring up and uh, no andrew always was very good painter i'm only kidding but he did he did do quite a lot of work for me uh mm -hmm. you know to help me out with commission work i was doing so uh, yeah no i always appreciate his work yeah, but yeah, yeah. so uh, I don't do everything, but I like to think that people think yes. of me as North Star's sort of lead. We'll call you the lead painter. Lead painter, yeah, that's okay. yeah, that's good enough, I think. Okay. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. So we are going to move on to the first topic, and that topic is going to be what's new. So what's new for you, and what's new? Uh, actually, I've got some uh, information that uh, Nick passed on to me, which I was truly grateful for. Uh, and on some release dates for some Oathmark models. Uh, so the trolls. Yeah, I, was in, I was interested to find that out from you, which was really yeah. nice because Nick. Apparently, apparently, yeah, apparently Nick neglected to tell Nick that he'd be painting anything soon. So. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, I may, I may, I may not paint them. I suppose. But, oh yeah, that's true. It, that's it true. depends what's, what's, what else I've got on my plate at the time, but. Um, no, the most recent stuff. I, oh, sorry. No, you were going to say what what you had. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. I'll, so, show, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Oh, indeed, sir. Uh, so yeah, the uh, the good news is is we are going to be seeing the uh, trolls that have, you've seen um, been released in resin. Um, they've been coming. Oh, I've, got, to I've, I've just had a thought. I've got some painted ones here. While, while you tell them that, I'll go and get them. It won't be a second. Okay. They're literally up here. Lovely. And so we're going to see those trolls out in metal in January. Uh, the next big thing is the orcs. So we can see our orc uh, first box of orc plastics out in April, and that will be swiftly followed uh, by the box of goblin slaves. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing them. Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to that, seeing that. Uh, that would be super. And I'm told there is going to be a uh, Oathmark vampire slipped in, hopefully somewhere in amongst that as well. Because oh, I know, really? we, yeah, well, I was. I mean, you don't I, know he's doing it, do you? He didn't say. He didn't mention that. No, he just gave me some tidbits, and that's what he's told me. Oh, so. I wonder if Mark. I wonder if Mark Copperstone's doing it. 
Well, I, I, I love everybody's sculpts, but Mark is, I asked, uh, yeah, Mark is one of my favourite sculptors. Yeah, so, me too. Me yeah. Too. I was, oh, um, I'll ask you, I'll, I'll, I want to speak to him later on today, actually, so I'll, I'll ask him. So that's an oath mark vampire. Yes, that's what I believe so. Oh, so do you know uh, what that's for? Say again. Do you know what the vampire is for? Is there a is there a supplement for that or something? Oh, yeah, there's already a vampire in um, Oathbreakers. Oh, yeah. Oh, is yeah. there in Oathbreakers? Oh, right. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. he's in there. He's yeah, of course he is. Yeah, it's the undead yeah. stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. He's, I should know that. I've just done a unit of undead. And, uh, yeah, he's um, yeah, he's got the stone stare. He's a, a handy little necromancer. He's a powerful necromancer and fighter. So he's uh, a handy little character to have out. Oh. Oh no, I, no! I'll look forward to seeing who's doing him. Yeah, well, I've been looking for a, 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 a an ex, no, I've not been looking for an excuse to do anything. Actually, I always just buy it. Um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but one has to make up the the, the rationale for it. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Oh look, they got a vampire now, so I can buy an undead army. <laughs> well, I did it. I did the undead for my Lord of the Rings project, which we may or may not have time to talk about. But oh, I'm sure. Oh, we... Here's my here's my painted troll, by the way. Oh yeah. wow, uh, guys, you can't see this. I can. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Man. He's a lovely model, and he's a real, yes. uh, you know, really what I thought of a Lord, uh, well, of a Lord of the Rings troll. But you know, it's it's just a great thing, I think. And the, there's there's the other one. Oh wow. It's not the ideal venue for showing these, but yeah, I, I'll um, they're not not going to come across well on on audio, but there no, no, we are. I'll get them out anyway. If you can send me some pictures, Kev, I, I will can, do. Oh yeah, I can do that. Yeah. What I can do is try and blend them into the um. You want me to do that? Should I do that now, or do you want? That would be fantastic. I can see if I can put them into the YouTube uh, thing, so the guys can see that. Um, apparently, there's technology out there. Uh, that can do these sort of things. I just need to find what it is. <laughs> well, you edit that. You'd edit that afterwards, though. Edit I'm that edit, after. Yes, I'll add, edit that in afterwards, afterwards. Oh, okay. So I don't. I'll, okay. Well, I won't look for the files files now. No, I'm no. So, so over to you, Nick, um, Kev. Okay. So, what's new for you on your painting table? Well, as the newest things that I've got that Nick sent me the other day were the stuff for uh, the new oh, uh, the new Frostgrave thing, which is is Blood Rage, isn't it? it I is. got that right. Yeah, Blood Rage, yeah, uh, which are uh, the fire giants, which look really exciting. And uh, again, I didn't actually know we were going to be doing some, but yeah, and one appeared the other day in my letterbox, along with a vampire wizard, I think, and yes. what else? Oh, yeah, some of those weird uh, blood, like, sucky uh, wolf things, you know, with the big, they've got, uh, oh, God, I can't remember what they're called. Uh, instead of a head, they've got a horrible sort of. Um, sucky like, bus. Like, uh, sorry. Uh, wow, well, uh, the sucky bus. No, I know which no, one. No, no, no. I, I, I know the model you're on about. I know. I do know. What get, you're I need on. to get the book to to to. So yeah, but they're they're like four-legged hounds, only with a uh, blood-sucking head. Yes, I know. Um, the they thing. look absolutely grotesque. They're really. I mean, the the models are really close to. Um, the 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 illustrations in the book oh right wow uh, so yeah they're they're another crazy creature that joe has dreamt up and yeah. they, the, the models just look great you know and uh really creepy and uh, and there's another couple of figures as well i can't remember i think they're probably vampire stuff but no the one that i really liked was the uh was the fire giant oh uh, yeah no i i, I think there was a picture of a metal that went out on one of the oh yeah i think uh, yeah, on yeah, face, yeah, on yeah, face yeah, yeah 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 you're right i did photograph them the other day yeah, uh, so. but often i'll take um usually i'll take gray pictures of them before they're painted and stuff just so we almost like for record purposes or for putting in when we haven't got painted yeah, yeah. i like to take a nice nice little nice, teeth yeah nice quality picture of them um primed up so they look smart yeah, no. That's... And yeah, I did them the other. I did them before Christmas, so uh, Nick Nick will have had pictures, which he may well yeah. have posted up to Facebook or I think it was Instagram on... or somewhere or Twitter. I can't. Yeah. I, it was I, don't, on... I, I don't do Twitter, but yeah, I, I, do, I do Instagram. In fact, I think I've just started following you on Instagram. If I got oh, the right yeah. person, <laughs> although sometimes it's not easy to tell because I use my own name on 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 all of these things, and I yeah. forget that other people don't. So I have to sort of 
Yeah, I'm Matthew Hart's big, so uh, that, that's the guy that should be me. <laughs> well, you'll be able, you might be able to tell, mightn't you? If, yeah, yeah I, I'll have, you. I can have a look. So yeah. Yeah. So, so if, if if it's not me, if I haven't done that right, give me a shout and I'll and I'll, and I'll find you if you can yeah. and follow so, you properly. Absolutely, because I, I I definitely follow you on Instagram. So uh, uh, did you I, have a picture of the uh, Rangers of Shadow Deep ogre in your in your yes. portfolio? Oh, yes. that's the one then, yeah, because that, that's what I saw. I saw that and thought, oh, I painted that. Oh, you did. <laughs> you, def you definitely did. And that was when I asked I to make sure I was not doing anything naughty using your work to promote the um, Range of the Shadow Deep uh, episode of Oathwire. So that's what I wanted to do. Cause, uh, oh, no, no, I don't think that's in it. Yeah. No, no, I think we're, we're all one big happy family, really. Aren't absolutely. We, so. No, absolutely. So, no, I like the Range of the Shadow I mean, I've never played it. I've not played oh, it yeah. deep. But I really like the the sort of um, I don't know what you call it the oeuvre of it. I just like the feel of it. You yeah, know, yeah. Like that very sort of almost like fairy tale, dark sort of end of the world type thing, and I really like that. And just yeah, that, a low mountain of work on it, and the amount of supplements for it. He's he's flowing through it definitely. Gosh, yeah. I mean, he obviously really loved it, didn't he? So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's I mean the listeners on here have, have, would have heard me say it before it's basically what brought me back I was, I'm a historical gamer uh pretty much for the last 30 odd years um, oh, right. okay yeah yeah I used to play a bit of a I, I played a and d a d and d back in the day yeah yeah didn't we all? as a teenager yeah. um yeah. and that was my fa that was my fantasy kick back then I didn't really do anything I grew up in a oh, okay. military I went to military wargaming clubs, so we didn't. Mm. They didn't do fantasy. We did Cold War stuff. We did World War Two. Oh right! No, I was lucky. And everybody did Napoleonics. Yeah. So um, I was lucky. The clubs I went to were, were well, and still are, a broad, quite a broad church in that respect. I was lucky that they're both big clubs. Yeah, yeah. So you got, you know, you, 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 there's almost always somebody there that was doing something that you'd be interested in. You know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the warlords. South on the wall, it was Anne uh, oh, right. Selwig. Oh, both, yeah, yeah. You know, both yeah, quite decent clubs. sized clubs. Yeah. Um, I don't know, 60 to 100 sort of people, so you get a good spread. Not yeah. that you'd get that many every night, sort of thing. No, no, no. No, no. I mean, I'm not complaining. I enjoy, I mean, I still enjoy historicals. Uh, mm, yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. no, I was lucky that I did both. You see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I never had to, I never sort of had to choose between them, really. Yeah. I, I did a bit, you know, did bits and pieces and obviously board games, that sort of, sort of stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think I mean, if I take it really back, the fighting fantasy with my first ever war game, you know, the, oh, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the Forest of Doom and all that and Fire, Wizards of Firelock Mountain. Yeah, and, yeah, Wizards of Firelock Mountain. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I, had all, I was doing those books and there were some other ones out there you could get as well. So I was always doing that sort of stuff um, when I was younger. But yeah, when I picked up wargaming when I was 14, it was, I always had plastic soldiers, you know, the same old, same old story. Yeah, me too, yeah, yeah, airfix plastics, yeah, yeah. With, with me brother chucking darts and marbles at each other. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, sometimes that involved the game as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I've played uh, a lot of, uh, of this sort of thing, and then I got um, into Star Wars X-Wing. Oh, my, right. yeah, yeah. my lad because yeah, yeah. trying to trying to get him to relate to wargaming somehow and he was a massive star wars fan and he wasn't interested in playing uh you know historical stuff it didn't hit his hit his buttons so no, no. uh we would we played a lot of that and then uh lockdown came and i was looking for something that wasn't us fighting against competing against each other oh like a, a, a cooperative game absolutely yeah. I, Oh, I, heard I, about Rang I, I heard about Rangers on a podcast that I've yeah. been listening to. Yeah. I thought, well, I'll buy the PDF. And, and that was it. I bought that. And and here I am with uh, masses of bloody fantasy stuff, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you really caught the bug. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, I mean. Oh, no, I had a much longer, long, slow sort of, int not introduction to wargaming, but my, my wargaming has been, you know, almost throughout my ad entire adult life now so um i'm ne i'm nearly 60 so um, i have quite and i started probably when i was 14 like like you say but uh, i mean my initial stuff was 
you know, your air fixed plastics like like almost everybody did. And but I was again lucky enough to be when I was at school, um, I went to a chess where there was a chess club, which wasn't really a chess club, it was a gaming club. They called it chess club, so it sounded popular. I mean, so you know, no, you know, people would go, Oh, chess, oh, that's a good intellectual thing. We mo I mean, I don't think I ever played chess, oh, <laughs> but we played board war games like Tactics 2, oh, yeah. you know, one of the original Avalon Hill ones, and various stuff like that. And my maths teacher who ran the chess club was a war gamer. Oh, right. I mean, he was a really nice bloke, very interesting man. He was a ex army, ex, it's like the school teachers used to be. Uh, ex, he was a he was a mining engineer. Oh wow! Amazing stuff, you know. You think, my God, you know that was. He had all scars on his back where he'd been down the down the pits and stuff. Like you know, cat they catch, they hit thing. You know, they catch things. Oh, like you. So you know, he'd actually literally been at the coal face, and and yeah, he was a war gamer. So he kind of introduced us into war gaming, and from that, I got an yeah, I just got an interest in it and and played and then realized the fact that you could play with your with your little airfic soldiers but you, you know you, it wasn't just like randomly chucking stuff at them like me and my brother did yeah. you know, there were actually sort of structured rules you could have and mm -hmm. and things like that and yeah it was just an amazing world i bought bill barker's uh ancient war games book and if you ever remember like the airfix publications they did a big um, long series of them. They did all sorts of modeling yeah, ones. The and Napoleonic one, I remember that. They one. did the Napoleonic one, that's right. Yeah. Like, the, the Epic one, which I still have. I still got it. And that with that introduced me to the fact that you could have armies and ancients and and that and that was that was about ancients, yeah. And then that started my fascination with Byzantines, of which I which has never left me. Um, Amongst all the other stuff I've done, which has been all sorts of war gaming, you know, every everything from like you say, from A D and D to well, it was D and D in my day. You know, we didn't have yeah. A D and D then. Um, got all, all sorts of stuff, yeah, from Warhammer to. to uh, but the, the fascination with the Byzantines have never left me. That was my first, my first metal army that I painted. Nice. Uh, which I bought figures for, which were Hinchcliffe figures, and I painted that with me dad. And yeah. that's really where I started painting. Yeah. And also, I wasn't any good. I, I'll send you some pictures of the. <laughs> of the awful figures. No, the figures weren't awful. They were of their time. But you, uh, you, my painting was awful. But yeah, I mean, you got, the problem you got. The other thing is, is well, what these youngsters don't know um, is the paints were bloody awful as well. Um, yeah, it was all yeah, all done in old humbral. Yeah, enamels. Yeah, enamels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I, you know they have their place. They have yeah, their yeah. Place, but. But you're, you're uh, not quite tricky down. and some of it i was doing in gloss enamels as well when you think ah. why, why would you do that <laughs> shiny soldiers <laughs> <laughs> well yeah they, yeah they, they were ending up shiny yeah, but yeah. no i was lucky enough to have my dad who was interested um not massively interested in the sense of he wasn't interested in playing much no, but no. he was quite interested in the historical side of it yeah. and he was quite interested in the painting of it yeah. And, you know, again, like me, he wasn't, he wasn't much good, but we sort of struggled along and then gradually learnt more stuff as we went, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean... I still have the army I painted. In fact, oh, I, wow. can, I can see the box of it. It's down there in this... It's stuck under a table somewhere, yeah. so nobody can see it. I, had a I, couldn't, I couldn't bear to part with them. So. I had a 15 mil minifigs French army was my first army, and I saw, unfortunately I oh, did get yeah. rid of it. I got rid of that in my early 20s because I thought nobody's going to be playing war games anymore because yeah. every, everybody's going to get a computer. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, how wrong was I? And thankfully, how right? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, the first army I think I painted what I would consider well, or it wasn't, but I thought of that at the time. I thought it was good at the time. That was a 15 mil army because everybody was 28. Nobody was going to play in 28 mil anymore. It was all going to be 15s, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, or they called it 25 mil. Well, it was 25 that, back then. Yeah, yeah until Brian, and still Brian Ansell invented 28 mil. Yeah. Um, it was yeah, anyway. Uh, so yeah, mine was a, again a Byzantine army, but in 15 mil. I think that was Mike's models. I think I don't know if they exist anymore. I don't think they do. 
I don't know, I've not even heard of them, so yeah. No, no, I think they like sunk without trace, as indeed yeah. the figures deserve to. Um, yes. But then I did some minifigs again in 15, and they were nice enough. Um, yeah. yeah, that's funny but that. that's when I really started thinking, actually, I might, I might like to paint things more than just uh, one colour of like gloss <laughs> and, and, and then varnish it gloss as well. You know, that's when I was kind of developing an idea of that I might want to actually paint things in a more serious, not a serious way, but not just for gaming. You know, I might want to enter painting competitions or that yeah. kind of thing, which I did. You know, I did. All right. So that is that. So what were you entering like uh, competitions at sort of clubs or? Uh, a, a bit. I mean, weirdly, my first war game competition, I think, was at the Model Engineer Exhibition, which I don't even know happens anymore. Right, never heard but of that. It, well, no, you may well not have that. It was a very big thing in the modelling world, the Model Engineer Exhibition, and they, they would cover everything in modelling, from railways to, oh, uh, anything you could think of that you could model. I mean, I mean, remember seeing one time we were up there, somebody had done a, uh, a manhole cover, you know, made a scale okay. model of a manhole cover. You know, it's a bit like modern art, isn't it? You go, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, really? Um, okay. But they would do almost anything. Uh, so, um, um, but one of the categories, obviously, they were divided up into different categories. Yeah, yeah. Like single figures, or and one of the categories was, was war games unit. Okay. Uh, so I entered a war games unit, and I won a silver medal, which wasn't, no, it wasn't fantastic, but I, I think it had the advantage with there, there weren't that many entries. I think so. Oh, I, right. I wasn't up, up up against too much competition, but that kind of sort of encouraged me a bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, Selwig, I went to not long after that. So we club. Yeah. They had a, a back then. They had a dedicated uh, modelling and painting section. Who didn't oh. war game at all? Oh really? They literally. I mean, sometimes they did bigger figures, but they would do smaller figures as well. Uh, but there was a guy called Max Longhurst there who who used to do a lot of stuff in like military modelling back in the day. Oh right, the well, Max military modelling magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Um, yeah, so he was, you know, he encouraged me to do painting. And I did go to do, I did start doing larger figures for a little while, but I wasn't that interested really. So I went back to painting War Games figures, but trying to paint War Games figures to a higher standard, like they were painting the big models. But obviously it needed slightly different techniques, but it gave me, a sort of inspired me a bit to, to do more painting, I suppose. And the club had like a mini painting competition every month. Just a little tiny one, you know, that mm. that just opened to club members, and eventually that um, uh, they stopped me entering it really because I used to win it a lot. So, oh. <laughs> so in the end, because we did have a system where everybody would vote for the entries and stuff like that, and in the end, they I got to just be um, I got to be judge of it really, so I could. All oh, right, okay. Um, so I did, didn't. So they, I didn't enter it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which was flattering and nice but and then we had you know we developed a few other painters at the club like Paul Baker, Steve Dean, people like that that you might have heard of they all yeah. went to the club and again I taught them everything they know obviously no, no not really but you know they were you know it was nice to have you know uh, uh, we had quite a little card old Graham Green as well who you might have seen some of his like Lord of the Rings open art stuff um, yeah I mean, fantastic work he does now. Oh, brilliant yeah. stuff. And yeah, so we had a group of about half a dozen of us all, you know, painting like crazy, really. And we didn't game. As, well, we did game, but not, the gaming wasn't necessarily the first thing. Okay. Except so, for Steve Dean, who was manically gaming. It, all right. And still is. He's a, a wizard when it comes to well, It was to be terrible because we'd all sort of think, all oh, right, we'll start this set of rules and we'll, we'll all learn it. And Steve would like know it almost instantly and, and all the rest of us were struggling and we'd beat us hollow. But, yeah, know. yeah. That's, then that's never good because then you're like, yeah, let's play another one. Oh, no, he's done it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So, so, so what I'm hearing there is, is, is basically everything you've sort of learned is uh, there's a lot of self-learning there. So you've gone because I mean nowadays you can go on. Yeah. You know, you can turn I can turn the TV on and watch a day's worth of painting tutorial. Oh, easy, yeah. And and more, I, yeah. I had no, I had no, I had no sort of instruction. To be honest, I would say my, you know, wasn't till recently, the last sort of five, six years, that um, uh, 
my techniques have improved massively. So um, from watching other people, I wasn't really so. You how I mean, is it instinctive? Is it? I mean, no. I mean, no, no, you said, I mean, really, the version of you know, people would use YouTube for now. I had you know, people at club that I was going to that, that were you know, the, the, the guys painting the big military modeling stuff, they were already of quite a high standard that I could sort of try and emulate and copy and copy some of the techniques that they used. The, like the level, the shading they used to use, because you know, not many people that were doing that on war games figures. No, I, I think no, I go to um, like there's a close to me is Gloucester Modeling and um, Bristol, and I do go to these modeling places because two reasons is they usually have got new stuff coming along. Yeah, uh, yeah. That war gamers don't see. I mean, just as a, I use AK Interactive paints. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, no, the nice paints, those, yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's because I saw modelers using it. They are mod, mod, model based sort of stuff. No, the nice paints, those. They come, from, yeah, they're 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 weathering stuff's really good. Yeah. I mean, it's good as Mig, you know, Migs do this, Migs that. Yeah, yeah, I, I like stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got some Mig stuff as well, but you know, I just sort of got it. You know, we all get a, you get your flavour, don't you? And I get, I've got used to them. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with anybody else's product out there to be honest it's just that's what i use no, but, it's a lot of good stuff it, and also, it does depend what suits you some paints don't suit some people no, no. It's brushes are the brushes are the same some people yeah, go, yeah. Oh, i love these brushes and you go really yeah, yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> I go, well i can't get on with them at all you know yeah. you go, oh okay yeah, so. <laughs> but, but paul baker's always doing that he said oh i've got these new brushes and i go Oh really? Oh, okay. And then I go, oh no, no, I don't like them. I'll go back to what I was using. So. Yeah, I, I still, I keep, I've jumped from Windsor and Newton several times and had to stand up back there, to be honest. So yeah, lots of people do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the ones I used were uh, mostly the the uh, the foundry paints, uh, brushes. Yeah, 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 I used I still to. use I still use those because I guess I got used to them. Yeah. And they suit what they suit the way I paint. And yeah, yeah. That's really. all you can say, really. You can't say. Who they're better than other people's because it, it really does depend on what you like and the only way to find out is to try them and lots of people go no i don't like them and yeah. there you go that's just the way it is with yeah. painting them and paints no, absolutely yeah I, I, I use broken toad as well but um i, like I them. know them that's a good game, isn't it? I yeah like they, they they you know if you wanted to experiment with them they're they're i'd say there's sort of you know pretty similar quality to Windsor and Newton at a vast, at about half the price. So, oh, well. right, yeah, because the Windsor and Newtons are quite pricey, aren't they? They are, which is that's why I was going to say earlier, I ain't dipping that into no enamel. No, um, no. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, so I yeah. think that's a lot, a lot, a I lot. They're priced, they're priced for artists. And I think artists, you know, like proper, what I call proper artists. And I think that they think they're going to spend a bit more money, I suppose. Yeah, no, absolutely. And they last longer and the little, little, and then, so, yeah, they, they've no, got... As you were saying, I mean, no, there wasn't YouTube and stuff when I was no. sort of starting out, but there was other people, fortunately, that I could ask. And yeah. because there were other people who were painting as well at the time, and you'd see, oh, he's, well, what's he done there or something? And you, I'd just go and ask them. Yeah. So I didn't, there wasn't... a, a I mean, there was the old book about. I remember, God, I think it might have been Hinchcliffe published a, a lot of compendium thing. All right, okay. That had some quite sort of basic but quite useful sort of tips in it. So it was that, and, and yeah, talking to modelers and talking to you know other guys who were trying out stuff. You know, the, I mean, one of the things that you mentioned about was. Um, my most useful tip that I've ever received, which is yes. a really hard question to answer, really, because there's yeah, so yeah. much useful stuff. But I suppose the one thing that really did change my style, which really fundamentally did change my style, was using black undercoat. Right, OK. Because yeah. I've gone up, I've got up to a various point and I'd not used it. I hadn't even occurred to me. And yeah. um, um, Oh, I don't know. We were at club, and and I'd, I'd look at this guy's stuff, and I thought, well, how's how's he done that? Yeah. And so I, I went and just asked him, and he said, oh yeah, oh yeah, I black undercoat these figures, and I go in. Well, uh, it seems so counterintuitive. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I, I used it to... almost didn't make sense that you paint something black that you were going to be later painting white. Yeah, and no, I, I, I used to, yeah, I used to do white. Yeah, that was yeah, a yeah. can of humble white paint and absolutely, you... yeah, 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 yeah. Um, up to I painted quite a lot of stuff before I sort of swapped to black undercoating, and it did take me quite a while to get the hang of it. Yeah. Uh, but after that, now I do almost everything black except stuff that I'm perhaps airbrushing and things like that. Uh, so, so yeah, if I had to pick one thing, it's not really a tip, is it? But it's it, it's something that that was quite seminal, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And and that's the other, the other thing that did bring me on, I think. Although I stopped doing it, I, I I stopped enjoying entering painting competitions. That was the other reason I stopped doing it. All right. was entering painting competitions so you again so you can see what other people are doing yeah, and yeah. go oh right okay that's interesting or oh no i hadn't thought of that i mean you don't get the opportunity to, like, to ask them no no but, you know you might not see them but but that i mean the salute painting competition was great for that and still is, yeah, still is, is a yeah i used i used to always love um going up and looking at the uh the salute stuff uh it was always awesome but um you go up there and sort of like wide-eyed and go wow um but yeah no i i am though i have to say my only issue with the salute got painting competition nowadays is is when you go up there you can't bloody see anything because the lighting's awful so. it is awful isn't it yeah because i often judging it but the things are taken away from the cabinets to do that and yeah, under yeah. proper lights where you can actually see the damn things but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. It's hard. It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because you've got to kind of have it in those cabinets to protect them. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. It's just... it, it, the lighting and the lighting in Excel can be bloody awful and all, can't it? it you can know, the actual lighting. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. And not a, not a drop of daylight, of course, because, you know, <laughs> they, they won't dare let any daylight in the place for some reason. I don't know why not. Yeah, that's, it's, it's basically you're in a hangar. Uh, with... Yeah, you are. Yeah. some low sodium lights it feels like anything so. yeah yeah and what, i mean it's great earlier on like before the show is open because they have the doors all open at the front oh really you actually get daylight in and it's, it's so um, much nicer when they've got those doors open but of course they won't leave them open because i suppose they no. think people are going to escape out that way or something <laughs> they might try and sneak into the war gaming oh thing. well yeah that's true yeah all those all those people wanted to sneak into war game shows yeah <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so um Yeah, all right. So that that's really interesting. Yeah. I mean I I mean I under nowadays I and I undercoat in grey. because uh, that's what I do and that's done for Donkey. Yeah. So uh Yeah, uh, I mean I could I couldn't recommend anybody changing specifically to black. No, 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 no. I, I I've I've tried uh, I mean I tried to paint in black, I just couldn't get on with it. Um No, no, so it's not yeah. But that's but don't take me as any any uh, uh, bellwether for uh, ability to no, paint. No, it's not. It's not for everybody. You know, it's again, it's what what suits you. It's yeah, yeah. Just sometimes it it's what suits you. Um, you know. But it does. Say, I use other stuff for 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 other things like often horses. I I won't do in black or uh, drag. You know, if I'm painting a big dragon or something, yeah, yeah. I might not. Or. Uh, um, I think I think um, with the black you definitely get a, a richer colour when you when you're painting the models. Uh, yeah, I can tell you can tell. You, I, I mean, I know I can I can see it. You've got that. I think you can see the you know the, the layers being built up and that because that that colour. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of a, a necessary sort of evil of black undercoating. You have to build up layers, otherwise it yeah. can be can look a little bit. Um, a little bit uh, untidy, so yeah. You know. And I, I think I think that sort of comes from my I am a gamer, uh, and not. I don't get me wrong. I love painting. Um, I I I use painting all the time for mindfulness. I find it just takes me off into another place. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. I lose track. Of, I absolutely lose track of time and stuff when I'm when I'm painting. In yeah. a way, I don't do when I'm doing other stuff. Like photography or stuff like that. You know, oh, sorry, my screen's just gone off. Thank That's you. Um, 
Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I absolutely, especially if I'm, I'm listening to a good audio book or something at the same yeah. time. Yeah, and yeah, I, I'll just be utterly lost. And, yeah. you know, and, and to be honest, I'm grateful for. I mean, I just said to Kev before, Santa, Santa Claus has been gracious and delivered some COVID to me. So <laughs> I, I've been stuck on my own for the last three days. And to be honest, I'm great. Uh, first day or so, I was, I've been feeling them rough as old what's it. But yesterday I started painting at my 10 mil um, cobblestone. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, that's what you were looking at. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. So I started doing that. And, and that's just that's been really good just to. Are you doing them as, what are you doing them as? Are you doing them as Lord of the Rings or is you? Doing yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent, excellent. So my, my, my spear are Urukai. Uh, so the, you got the half forks at Urukai. Yeah. Um, and then the orcs are going to be the goblin-esque type chap. So yeah, lovely, lovely little models. Aren't they, they are. I've, I've, um, yeah, I can't say enough about them to be honest. I've really enjoyed painting. I love the little, um, the little Nazgul on it, on on his little creature. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got him somewhere. I've, I've painted all the walls up. I've painted all the wall. The walls are nice, aren't they? I yeah. really like them. I painted all the wall riders up that I had as well. So um, I've got. 20 uh, wolves done 15 wolf riders so now i'm doing my the spears so i'm hoping to get them done today uh, maybe by tomorrow and then i've got um the archers and the uh other bits and pieces so yeah i can't remember what's in the range of that now. yeah it's, it's, it's a big yeah. honest it's a while since i've looked at them yeah they're nice i did buy i bought some um i bought because they don't do because i want to use it for oath mark slash Kings of War slash, uh, uh, what else was I going to play? Uh, uh, shield and Sword and Shield Fantasy. Um, oh, right. I don't know. Well, I, yeah. I know of it, but I don't know, yeah. what, the, I don't know what, what the format is, for, as it were, for that. But we're going to use it for um, all of that. But I want to base everything I'm doing is so I can play it, do it Oathmark. Um, I bought some Callistra stuff as well, um, which is. Um, yeah, <laughs> they have, they're Mark, nice. They're, Mark they're, always sort of quite likes them because they sort of take off his figures a bit, don't they? Yeah, they do. In the nicest, uh, in the nicest possible yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, the 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 orcs. Some of the orcs I've got are really nice. Actually, the wolf wolf riders because I just thought I'd have a look to, for a comparison. They're not too bad. The blister is quite not is nice. Um, I would just yeah, because Mark. As as ever with Mark, he never quite finishes the range. So, <laughs> yes. um, sorry, did I say that out loud? No, no. <laughs> Shh. Hush my mouth. Um, so yeah, sometimes you do need to sort of fill in fill in the gaps and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, some of them, I like. I've got the the dark, the the black black hawks, which are massive, um, and they're, they're just a, they're a bit GW in their look. Um, for the, oh, I like tell you the ones I really like are the trolls, the war trolls that Mark did. Oh yeah, yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got nine of them. Aren't they great? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm looking. Oh, can't, have, have you like bent the arms about a bit? Oh, you can't really do much with them, can you? Really? Uh, there's there's this guy who's got people can't see it, but he's got his hammer up. So I'm gonna, I am gonna maneuver that around to give it a different. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or can you change? If the worst happens, it splits. Or? I can fill it with a bit of green stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but no, yeah, the other really ones, lovely. Like yeah. those, again, exactly how, how exactly what, what what you'd want for Lord of the Rings as well. Absolutely. So that's that's my plan is basically do uh, ten mil um, Lord of the Rings. So um, I mean, I'll, ten mil ten mil is a good scale to do it in, really, isn't it? It is. Uh, you just, I mean, my plan is to have like about a five thousand, six thousand point art. Uh, I've got about ten thousand. Oh blimey! No, the biggest I've, I've done is about two and a half thousand points in. All oh, right, yeah. Well, uh, it's not a lot of stuff to be honest. If you put add them, if you start out putting mages and oh know, yeah, that's true. All that bits and pieces. It's not. It's not. I've not gone like. It's just. Not I'm not crazy to, with it. Yeah. Not tempted to have a dragon, then you're not trying to have a smaug, then are you? Uh, if I can find if I can find a ten ten mil uh, dragon I like, yes, possibly maybe a fifteen mil one. Yeah, uh, I get. Yeah, you probably fit, yeah you probably find a fifteen mil one that would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's definitely that's definitely on the cards. So. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? But yeah, no. So I'm really enjoying that at the moment. So and I oh, okay. I I've painted six mil figures before, mostly modern stuff actually. Yeah. So it's like green, 
dab out a bit of flesh, pick out, yeah. dab, a, dab a bit of green, uh, brown, black for camouflage. And but most of my stuff was Soviet, so it was green. <laughs> oh yeah. Flesh rifle. <laughs> yeah, so, pretty, yeah. Hopefully, quite quick to do. Yeah, yeah. But these, these, these are quick. Uh, but there's lots of detail in there. There is, know? isn't there? Yeah, kind of in a way. Yeah, they, they, they. You have to spend a little bit of time on them. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm sort of batch painting them up. Um, it's yeah, it's nice. It's like getting the leather picked out. They've got little bags on them, and the shields are nice. I'm painting the shields in a lot of leather esque, more than a black steel sort of thing that you see from the films. Because I don't think orcs I just don't see how they would have these big steel shields. Um, because nah, no. They, I don't see it. So, and it's beautiful what they've done in the film, but it's not the aesthetic I I read when I read the book. So, no, I don't. I I don't dislike the films, but no. they're, they're not exactly what I had in mind. But I do. I do. Some there's some stuff in them which is really nice. Some of the visualization and the country and the scenery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they did some fantastic stuff with that. Nice. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, some of the stuff didn't quite quite work I, I, as far as i'm concerned and no. and we won't mention the hobbit at all obviously no 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 that's <laughs> the, yeah anyway we will move on from that completely yeah let's yeah. move on yeah okay. please yeah <laughs> my, my, next plan, my next plan will be to get the the um alliance good alliance or the rohinians and uh, yeah. all that lot so uh, it'd be nice yeah. to see if it would be nice to have a few more dwarf uh, bits and pieces in there but uh, I can fill that out, so I'll, I'll be looking out for those. I've got a 3D printer as well, so if I needed to, they, they, I, I don't well, like those mark, those GW mark. looking dwarves, and a lot of them are out there. The 3D prints are GW looking, and they're all that box shape. Yeah, so, no, I'm not 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 a big fan. Yeah, I mean the Oathmark armies, the armies that I've got are Lord of the Rings based as well. They're. Uh, a good army and an evil army obviously but they're set in the third age uh i can't remember the exact timing of it now but they're a bit before the wars right like, like in lord of the rings they're a bit before that and they're based around the uh sort of south of Mirkwood type area so they've got elves in them and dwarves and men it's a sort of a last not last alliance really a uh Battle of Five Armies type sort of approach where you've got an alliance of goodies yeah. and, and then your evil armies obviously consist of, of orcs and, and and more orcs and goblins and trolls and that kind of thing. Um, whereas um, the, the good armies are, you know, say, elves, dwarves and men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was saying that my dwarf army is going to be a uh, goblin slash uh, dwarf family army so <laughs> oh right okay well that's not totally on lord of the rings is it no no because dwarves did get a bit um a bit shady in some of their they did carryings on didn't they so but yeah so but yeah so obviously your that's your thing then as you look you know I just yeah see i mean i've work. not played i've not really played oath mark as you should properly play it really oh, right. like, like it as proper oath mark we I've always tended to use it as a set of rules for playing Lord of the Rings, really, which I suppose isn't really what it was meant for. But it's not, but it is ideal. You're not the only because you, 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 you know Nick is that's Nick's army is is, is Lord of the Rings as well. Nick's isn't a it? big Lord of the Rings fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'll send you my army list. I worked out. That'd be worked awesome. Out. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fantastic. So you can have. I did. I did do it as an article but in fact i can send you the link to the article i did oh, that'd be good. Yeah, it's yeah. on me in in me um me north star web magazine oh, right, cool. uh, but he, there are there are articles about it and about the and those armies are all fast painted as well oh okay so they're not um you know they're because they're, again i wanted to do them at scale and uh, it was something we did during the first sort of lockdown stuff all right okay. so that was build loads of plastics and paint loads of plastics sort of as fast as possible all right well wow. uh, you know still making them look nice and that but, yeah uh, just to just to, just to get some armies done and then we didn't play with them for quite a while for various other reasons oh well, yeah now, just... I, now i have played with them a bit and um tried to get to grips with oath mark uh which i really like i must admit although i'm not oh, 
suppose you might say I'm paid to say that, but um, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you I could. Do. I mean, it's one of the one of the ones I do game with. Um, well, that says a lot, though, doesn't it? If you, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've well, played. I, I, a lot I of fantasy games out there, so if you're yeah, playing, I, you must there like... is a lot of game. That's true. There's a lot of gaming out there. Yeah. I mean, I play for Ostrave as well, which yeah, yeah. Obviously, I've been playing that a lot longer than I've been playing Oathmark because it's been out. Yeah. A lot longer. And although I've not played it as much recently, because uh, you know you can only do so many things. Yeah. yeah no. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's what I like about that is, is you can, you know, you can put it down. You do the campaign book. You can put it yeah. down. And then go go and play something else, uh, and then they bring it in. It's the rules of the only problem I have is when I'm playing a Joe game is some of them. Yes. The rules are very similar, yeah. but then there's slight differences, and you go, yeah, no, no, no. Is, is, go, is, is that Rangers of Shadow Peak? No, hang about. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, is that? Well, I've been playing. We've been playing Stargrave campaign at the. Uh, oh, have you? I've not played Stargrave properly. Oh, well, I've, only, I've only messed about with it a bit. I've not actually played it. Well, I mean, the the stuff you've oh, I'm going to blow some smoke up your bum, but um, oh, right. the stuff you've you've painted is um, insanely good. So I've, oh, thank you. I have enjoyed painting it. Yeah. I, I hope that sort of shows really. But no, absolutely. No, I, I had some lovely stuff done for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I Bobby, was Bobby Jackson's Bobby Jackson's metal stuff is so so crisp and and yeah. nice, and then the plastics work well too. Yeah, but, the, uh, no, they're and, all. And he did all those conversions as well, which I love, all the like dwarf, <laughs> uh, the knolls and all the other bits and pieces. Yeah, there's some some nice bits. Occasionally Nick would send me stuff and I'd try and I'd try and convert them before I'd actually done the photographs of the real thing, as it, as it were, just, just just to see what I could get away with. Yeah, no, no, I, I think it's, I mean, there's a lot of people out there taking, uh, I, well, I believe there's, uh, what I've heard is there's people take a lot of inspiration out of that. I mean, I'm a bit naughty. Um, I had uh, about 400 quid's worth of Imperial Assault figures sit, uh, from the sitting up in my uh, gaming cabinet. And I'm like, eh, I'm going to use them because I don't play that very often. So all my stuff Star Wars, I'm afraid. So, oh, uh, no, I've seen people do it. So, and some very yeah. nice Star Wars stuff it is too. Yeah. Now, I, well, to be honest, at first I, I bought the rules and stuff and I wasn't sure that anybody was going to play it at the, you know, I was going to get people to play it with me. Oh, and, right. Okay. And then at the club, everybody was like, we had like eight people. <laughs> so I was like, oh, well, I haven't bought any figures, so uh, I'll get these up, whack on a bit of paint. But I mean, I don't know if you still do, but I, I still do historical gaming as well. Oh, no, I do, yeah. Because yeah. I love playing, uh, my favourite is, and it has been for well, quite a few years now, was um, Death in the Dark Continent, uh, which is uh, African-based wargaming in yes. the 19th century. Not not people think it's colonial warfare but no, no, no. it's not just colonial warfare there is obviously colonial armies in there yes on account of their carving up africa at that almost at that point or slightly yes. after but there is an awful lot of in fact there's much much more african tribal stuff oh, uh, God. And, and, and armies of the kingdoms and the nations of africa yeah, rather no. than the europeans who were coming in to try and nick it all yeah unfortunately uh, yeah unfortunately we did you know some amazing civilizations that were there you know the benin you yeah, know, the benin, oh yes God, yeah, 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 yeah 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 um, all the, all the um, city states in along the southern sahara yeah all those the sokoto and the, awesome. all that lot yeah and, there uh, was some nice nights. i mean that's one of the one of the ones i love is the knights of the of the savannah uh, with their armored cavalry and stuff you know right into the, late into the 19th century and um, the Azandi civilization north of north sort of the Congo, um, known as the Zulus of the, of the Congo. Yeah. And then further up on that, there's the ones that, in the southern Sudan. So there's loads of fantastic like tribal armies that you can use. In fact, I don't have. I only have one European army, and all the rest of my stuff is is African. Um, yeah, and no, I've, I've bought... got a larger Zandi army, which is which is good fun. I bought one of those um, Nick uh, surprise box things that they 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 did a few. Oh really? What's what, what, what? Yeah, I've never seen one. So. Uh, I think there was there was there was all sorts of bits and pieces of it. Uh, there was a uh, some sort of uh, board game in there that was basically for kids. I'm, I'm not saying that you were trying to get rid of some stock, Nick. 
um, that may be sitting around, but I think you were. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was a great little present, actually, for my my um, my cousin's two kids. Oh, uh, well, so, and they loved it. It was some sort of like animal um, sort of sports game thing with these tokens on it. It was an Osprey game. Oh, okay. No. Yeah, and, and it was cool, uh, but I got lots of little bits and pieces in there. Little, uh, I got some of the stuff from from that darkest Africa range, and all the I got the uh, Congolese um, bowmen and that. And so there's some really nice, mm. really nice sculpts in there, actually. Yeah, Steve Salad. I think Steve Salad did that. Yeah, all right, okay. So, yeah, Steve, you did some. That's some really. Uh, I just really nice work, and mm. uh, I actually, you know, I was. I've mentioned it a couple of times, so um, I thought I find you know war gamers we sort of sit in sit in a in that bracket, don't we? I'm not saying anybody before anybody gets on their high horse. You know, we're white white men and we paint white men um, quite often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I realised that a while ago, two about two years ago. That's when I started. So I've been really, when I got into Frostgrave, I was really impressed with the whole sort of, you know, um, A, there's a lot of female characters in there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and then they've they got that diverse diversity in there as well. So um, <clears throat> I, mean, oh, I want to do up a, an Oathmark army as an African army, but I don't want it to be necessarily in... Um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that. As a human army, sort of barbarian army -esque, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, but not, yeah. not in a way that um not in a way that looks like they are just zulus or anything like that so i'm going to be looking at them that's just, your voice you sound a bit yeah well i'm just gonna edit this out <laughs> you didn't need to hear that right <clears throat> <laughs> okay <clears throat> one two three so yeah i'm gonna um looking at building that uh i've got a friend so what what figures would you use you think i don't know that's that's a very good question i haven't delved do too deep into it yet uh i mean if... one of the one one of the ones i've got on my list of things that i really want to do is uh is a shillock army now they're, they're quite obscure all right but, but a fabulous um costume well not costume they didn't wear much to be fair but okay. what they did wear was was great and lots of um uh painting face painting and hair painting oh, and okay. hair sculpture they went in for uh very interesting thing uh, yeah so they they are southern southern sudan uh, oh, okay. quite a, quite a tough gig uh just to live there let alone having yeah, I was say it's not it's not yeah <laughs> yeah it's a, it was a hard life i think but uh, they are beautiful again mark copperstone of course and yeah, they are just lovely. And those in his those in his range, are they? And the uh, yeah, 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 in the darkest Africa, in his darkest. I think. Oh right, yeah. I'll, I, you know what? I'll have to go and have a look. So uh, I'm sitting there going, oh, "This is what I want to do," and uh, I haven't actually had a yeah, good it's, look it's, at what I need to do. So. S H I L L U K. Okay. So it's only a small. It's only like five packs he did. All right. Uh, but there's everything you need in that lot, and you could do quite a bit of converting if you wanted to i mean they 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 do have some arm with guns and stuff which i'm not quite sure how you'd fit into oath mark but um there's a lot you know there's spearmen and, and clubmen and yeah, like yeah, yeah. That. so uh they would yeah they would make lovely figures uh, i suppose you could cut the barrels off and there's enough plastics if you've got both mark plastics you could start adding you can make crossbows or something. Yeah, yeah crossbows all sorts of stuff you could do yeah. all sorts of things yeah so great possibilities but yeah, yeah no, I, don't know if Oathmark, I don't would would Oathmark ever get um firearms i suppose i don't know i wouldn't have thought so it's dark age i would have i think that for me that's kind of what i i don't i don't want that uh, uh gw renaissance feel to to fantasy um no it never appealed to me i'm no think. i yeah that that's I mean, I mean, nice, figure, nice figures they used to use if you wanted oh, to use them as yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, and stuff. But no, I never, it never appealed to me for games. No, I, um, and uh, and that's fine. You know, every, each their own. I'm not slagging. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They've, you know, there's a lot of GW players out there that, you know, are playing games because. But yeah, if 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 I was given the time to do it, that's what I'd I'd like to do: the Shillock yeah. Army, the Death in the Dark Continent, and, 
uh, the Knights of the Savannah Army to do all those beautiful knights painted in their full um, gaudy colours, which is right. lovely to do. That would that sounds quite cool, actually. That definitely sounds. Oh cool. yeah, they 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 are amazing. But, um, but yeah, quite. The problem with the Shillock Army is it's quite it would be quite large, so that would take quite a while. Yeah. And the Savannah Army is they're quite complicated, so again that would take quite a, a while. But you know, it's it's in me definitely in me in tray. That uh -huh. and I'd quite like to do all the rest of the frost grey stuff that I haven't painted. All right, it's, it's quite a bit of frost grave stuff out there, isn't it? There's so. a bit, yeah. And I mean, some things, <laughs> weirdly, there's things like um, the knolls, you know, the, 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 yeah. the lovely plastic knolls. Yeah. Now, I've never actually painted any. Oh, really? No, well, no, no let me finish. I, I, I've never painted any in real true 28 mil size. Oh, right, OK. I did paint them, and the ones you see on the box are painted by me, but they're not. 28 mil and the ones you see inside uh, the books uh that painted by me are also not 28 mil even they, though they, they are three ups yeah yeah because yeah. that was at, at that point to get them early you know early enough done so they could get into the books and stuff um they were masked because they were going to be plastics originally those were done at three up size they're not done like that anymore obviously because it's all digital oh, really? now. But mm -hmm. those ones were well. That's how the Perrys. I think the Perrys still do it. I think oh, right, they yeah. make them. They make their masters three up. Yeah. So they, they, they are... the re yeah, the listeners, if they have don't understand that, basically. Oh, sorry. But, yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's fine. So basically, what we're, we're saying saying is is that the I know my maybe you get the figure, but you you cut you you're doing the sculpting at a lot three times bigger than yeah, it's three actually times as big. Yeah. Yeah. And then when when it goes off to to be done it gets then gets back reduced back down yeah, it gets pantographed down which they say that is if that's like the easiest thing in the world i don't really understand how it's done however it is done and yeah they reduce down. i think it's so you get a sharper image and stuff like that and um so yeah but i used to get resins of those original three ups to paint so they would be ready to go in the book uh, then obviously that would be way back Whereas the production line, you know, the production period for doing plastics could be can be quite long. Yeah, I think Nick was saying, you know, it's um, and a, and a, a good run at six months. Yeah, six months. Yeah, and, that's and obviously there's COVID. <laughs> well, yeah, and also the book productions have long runs as well. So you're trying to get the things in early. Yeah. So yeah, I'd, I would paint the three ups and then I would composite them down onto pictures with 28 mil figures the right size uh, essentially faking the pictures up so they look right and i think i mostly got away with it i don't think many people spotted it I, to be honest yeah uh, to be honest you've, you've said that i did, had no idea so it, oh, that's good yeah, yeah well my work is done yeah, exactly I mean, to be fair the one on the back of the box is fine because that's never seen against that's not shown against 28 mil figures they're just shown all together uh, uh they're all three ups on that but the blooming things take ages to paint because they're huge. So what, what scale is that then? I guess they're about 90 mil tall, I suppose. Yeah, that is big, isn't it? It's is quite big. And yeah. it's just the acreage because it's not three times the acreage. No, no, no. It's, it's volume. So it's three times, three times, three, you know, it's three. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah you've, got to pick, you've got to paint that piece of cloth. All of a sudden it's like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot. fine, you know, I don't mind doing the work, but it just meant that there was, you know, it was quite a lot of work effort put into it. Then I had to photograph it and then I had to convince people that they were 28 mil figures, which I think we mostly got away with. I think, yeah, I'll show you, I'll show you. That's the frost grave box. Yeah, yeah. Those are, those aren't 28 mil figures. Okay. Wow. Uh, there you go, guys. You, I wouldn't know that. I, I mean, the seat back, that's some really good photography as well. So, uh, which I believe that you're a part do most of that as well. <laughs> I do quite a lot of photography, yeah. I do, yeah. Um, yeah, most of the photography, I guess, for North Star. N not entire, not all of the Oathmark stuff. Some of that might be done by uh, Dan at War Games Illustrated. Dan, um, I've forgotten his name, his second name. The editor, anyway. We take yeah. very nice, very nice pictures. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, but most of the the stuff like you'll see in like the original Oathmark book, 
that's mostly my photography in there. And I think nearly all of it in the frost grade books uh, and all the supplements is, is all my photography as well. Nice. So yes, I've done quite a lot. Of, <clears throat> I, I'm guessing I've probably got about 60,000 pictures on this computer that I'm talking to you on. Blimey. <laughs> Obviously I take a lot of pictures of the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you take, you know, it's, and you, and you, you, if I take 300 pictures, they might use 30 of them, that kind of thing. Because yeah. that's how you get good, good pictures. You take lots, like, like painting in a way, you get yeah, good yeah. at painting by painting lots and, and, you, get you, better. Get, and yeah. you get good photos by taking lots of pictures. Right? Yeah, no, that's a good point, actually. I've just been sort of, I've got a light box and a, a, de a decent camera now instead of trying to use my mobile. So I'm practicing with that and you, like you say, you get some good pictures and some not so good pictures but yeah, yeah. Uh, it's learning but so i mean so this i mean to be honest obviously you're doing this as a full-time job this is your your work this is, it is. yes this is what kev does on it gets up in the morning and goes, <laughs> that's all i do <laughs> i'm gonna do i'm gonna do x y and z today well no i'm fortunate that i'm not just painting you know i'm doing i'm doing the photography for nick yeah, and I do quite a lot of web layout and things like that for Nick as well. So I'm, you know, I have more more than I'm, I'm more than just the painter sort of thing. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, oh, I lay out their adverts and things like that. You see their adverts in War Games magazines. I have noticed them. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I do though. I do the layout for those as well, and yeah. I do the photography in that. And if Nick needs like, oh, I don't know, flyers or. You know, box art for stuff. You know, like the latest silver bayonet stuff. I can yeah, yeah. box art for that. I didn't do the box art for the Osprey, uh, for the Oathmark or uh, Frostgrave stuff. That was done by Osprey. Oh yeah, yeah. You can I supplied photos. Yeah. You know, the photos on the back here, like I just showed you. I supplied yeah, yeah. that photo and painted the figures in it. And the little blower part man there that shows you how to put them together. All right. Yeah. That that's done by me as well. All right. Okay. Cool. With a little bit of photo trickery in Photoshop, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. In fact, when you see the figure, when it's all stuck with bits of blue tack, it doesn't look like much, really. <laughs> try, and then I chop out the bits of blue tack so it looks like you know, like your like your original air yeah, 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 yeah. instructions. You know, the blow apart instructions. Yeah, I've yeah. done a few of them actually. I quite enjoy doing them. I did it for the. I've never seen the Gasland stuff. Have you? Yeah, yeah I've got you. Mill. Yeah, I got um, you. That I. There, there was the, the last set we did was uh, there was a buggy on the uh, on the frame, the plastic frame. Oh yeah. So I did the blower part, how to assemble the buggy thing, the pictures, which I, was quite fun to work out how to do them. So yeah, so I don't just do no, no. Don't just do painting, although I love doing the painting. Yeah. Obviously. So so when did, when I mean is this how often long have you been sort of in the my world of uh, the wargaming is is your living as well as oh as gosh hobby. well ten, oh, 10 years i've been with nick this year coming up all right okay and i did and i'm 60 this year as well so that puts me back to 50 i've been working with nick for 10 years and then i did about 13 years with foundry okay uh so that's you know getting on 20 oh, 23 years uh, and then I did quite a few, I guess about 10 years working as a freelance painter for myself. All right, okay. So, so you've quite, been doing, yeah. quite a long time. That's 30 odd or more yeah. years, I guess. Yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. So, so the question is, you know, hobby versus job, you know. There's yeah, a lot it's interesting that. <sighs> it used to bother me more than it does now. Now I love it. I just it doesn't feel like a like work particularly or hobby particularly yeah i just like it all and i just that's just what i do yeah, I suppose yeah. it's become so i'm so used to it i suppose so it, yeah <coughs> excuse me do, do you find do you do you, i mean i suppose with all like all works you get up some mornings and you think oh i've got to paint that that's a pain in the ass it's a complete grind or no you, no 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 i've oh. never had that really uh, sometimes so, so. i think Oh my God, I, I haven't got time to do this. Right. You know, that's a, you know, oh God, you know, I'm really, you know, I, I, we need to get this figure, I need to get this stuff done or something. That can, that can be, but I guess that's like any job, isn't it? You know, you, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. You know, you've got, you've got targets and you need, 
oh, you know, I'll, I'll go, I've got this photography done because Osprey want it by this date. Yeah. Like I've just done the photography for, um, oh God, what's it called? Uh, sorry, I have to keep track of these on my diary, otherwise I forget. <laughs> <laughs> Eternal Hope, which is a Stargrave one. Oh, it's the new, yeah, the new Stargrave. Um... No, I've just, I've just done the photography. All right, nice. Photography for that. I've no idea when it's going to be released. Uh, sometime next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be sometime next year, yeah, because they have really long uh, release time schedules, I suppose do. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, the world... no, I, 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 I don't have a problem with the hobby, you know, work, hobby yeah, yeah. interfacing, because if I wasn't, if I wasn't, doing this for Nick I would be painting mis myself anyway it wasn't like I'd it isn't like I'd stop doing it so yeah no, absolutely so how, how, long, how, how long does it how long would you spend I mean how long do you on average I would say you know not on, a, on a 28 mil figure how, how many hours does it take you to paint one? it really is you know uh how long is a piece of string right because you know it can vary so much but it might be a day a day yeah. figure something like that yeah yeah but it depends what it is. And also, yeah. I, I rarely paint one figure at a time. No. Unless it's like something urgent and Nick says, oh, my God, we need to get this done. Can you drop everything and just concentrate on that? Normally, I'll have half a dozen, 10, 20 figures all on the go at once. OK. Although, if you saw my painting table, you wouldn't think that. You'd think I've probably got about a 200 figures all on the go at once. <laughs> like everybody has loads of ones in undercoat just waiting for their turn yes. you know, gathering dust a bit yes no I definitely got that and then uh, i got the ones that haven't been undercoated as well <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah well we've always all got them <laughs> yeah huge boxes of ones that we, we, won't, talk, yeah. we won't discuss those though. <laughs> no i think well no but I, I, again you see i don't mind that you see i view collecting yeah. figures as a hobby in itself it and is. I'm not fussed the fact that I, I re now realise, of course, that I'm never going to paint all the figures I've got. No. I've just got too many. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want that stopping me having no. the pleasure of buying new stuff because I love exactly. them. I, 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 a friend of mine who used to go to our club, who's moved away now, yeah. uh, he got he got all his stuff out and tried to work out how long it would take to paint it. <laughs> and yeah, then, and do then how 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 uh, long it would take take to play with it all as well oh my god yeah <laughs> and uh, it, yeah a couple of lifetimes <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like yeah, you can't do it and i'm like yeah all right yeah cool <laughs> you've like worked well, it out no, I, I, one of my other hobbies or that i don't do much with now but i used to was collecting action men all right yeah, yeah. you know the the ones we all play with again yeah, one absolutely. of the things that i played with before before i played with airfix figures yeah, yeah, I used to do. Yeah, but I just collect them. I don't do anything with them. I, I look at them. I get them out occasionally to clean them and put them away again because they get a bit dusty or whatever. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not out in the garden playing with them. You know, <laughs> so I don't do that anymore. No. Um, Digging so, the garden. Yeah, I, I mean, I view the figure. I view, I view it that I just collect figures as well. I don't have to paint them. Well, I'd love to paint them, but yeah, I no. just collect them because they're nice things. Yeah, absolutely you know we're really lucky you know in our hobby at the moment it, look at this is so much good stuff it's insane amounts i mean yeah. i i yeah. remember i mean it, I remember it says i've got five minutes left in my scheduled meeting does that matter no no okay I'll, I'll dismiss that then. yeah no it's 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 yeah i i just remember you know you used to go to salute and every, every all of the suppliers were there it wasn't just like yeah. you know it was everybody you know yeah. when, when i was growing up it wasn't like you know and now it's just you know i mean it's, there's lots of serious players out there um making mm. stuff making you know making a living out of it as well so yeah yeah i mean look at like somebody like warlord i mean the amount of stuff they do yeah I've got hundreds of people working for them yeah you know, i don't know what they'll do but there's, there's loads of them yeah and, no and they produce a mammoth amount i just what did i see an advert today for slain did you see you yeah, yeah, I, was, yeah I saw that yeah yeah you know, they look oh. really nice don't they yeah, yeah i know i was like oh slay yeah. yeah me too and i've been doing this how long have i been doing this and i still go wow look at that there's yeah. some new figures coming out me like, what am i doing 
Yeah. No, I know. I, I, was, I, say, I love. I just love that. That's the part of the hobby I love too. I just like no, absolutely. collecting the figures. And you know, we might paint them one day. Who knows? I was immediately like, ah, oh, I should see some new characters for my uh, human army. The yeah. Oathmark I haven't bought yet. Oh and... God, yeah, wouldn't they be good in Oathmark? Yeah, that's the oh, first. Yeah, that's... What they call them, straw warriors, aren't they? Is that yeah. what they call? Yeah. Oh, I thought, oh, brilliant! I thought they look insane. I was just like, yeah, I need them in my life. But um, yeah, me too, me too. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to see if um, if I can get some of them. So, but yeah, there's, there's, I there's, mean, that's the other thing that I do collect figures that I'm never probably going to paint is all the Doctor Who stuff because I love yeah, Doctor yeah. Who. Being being a massive Doctor Who fan, as you can see, can you see from my T-shirt? No, you probably can't. I can't know. Oh, I'll stand up a bit. There we go. I happen to have uh, a yeah. Cyberman <laughs> T-shirt on this morning. But yeah, I, I've got the figures and I think, am I ever going to get around to painting those? And I think, no, probably not. But I just like them to have. Yeah, they are, they're nice figures as well. Though. Yeah. yeah, they are good. Oh, yeah, it's not. I'm not saying that I wouldn't paint them because they're no good or anything. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, it's just time and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's it. even though I'm like, like I said, I'm I, at the moment currently uh, I have an opportunity to have a relationship. Let's call it that. Um, <laughs> I still don't spend all day every day just painting, painting, painting when I've got spare time. So it's only so much you can do. So yeah, but. absolutely. I mean, I must admit, I am quite drawn to fast painting stuff now as well, as well as doing the, you know, the 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 normal. I say the normal stuff I do, but yes. like the Oathmark stuff I did, I, I wanted to get armies out there and done in a reasonable space of time so and, and you know wanted hundreds of figures on the table sort of thing so yeah, I yeah. I'll, and again i'll send you the links to those articles i did about it yeah now i'll put them up that's awesome just to show that i you know i, I don't i'm not just that's not I, did, I don't just do that one sort of style of painting i like to do lots of different stuff yeah no absolutely and, yeah i mean and that's that's you know when it comes to painting i think you know if you're a seasoned veteran that's you know got uh doing it as a living like yourself and there's lots of other people out there you know doing this day in day out or you're new to this game uh and you've just started out and you have no idea what the hell you're doing um but or you're in the middle you know you've done some painting and you enjoy a bit of it or you know you go and get pay somebody to go and get commission it get, get it commissioned because you're loaded um, <laughs> um it doesn't matter it's, it's just uh, you just do what you can do isn't it um, oh well i still i get uh for example i get andrew andrew taylor to paint figures for me for me uh, yeah, yeah. I, I love his stuff yeah. you know he's a great he's a great painter and i just i just like i want to have some of his stuff in my life well, you know, hey. i'm not, not going to use them probably to gain with but i just just like them they just <laughs> Yeah, and also no. I look, I get, I get to look at them closely and crib stuff off him, you know, which is another, and claim it as my own. That's a good idea. Yeah, I didn't think. Yeah. Of... Oh yeah, I've done, done that over the years. Yeah, long. Yeah. You, well, you got the once you got the eye in, I suppose you can tell. You, ah, he's done this. I mean, I, it, yeah, there's still some type I look at Andrews and go, how the hell did he do that? Yeah, I've been. Um, he's one. I think he's Ian um, Craig who's doing the bits and pieces for you, uh, for North Star as well. Um, he's um, been on here a couple of times. So he, I, when I'm like, oh, I send him a picture of something and he'll go, I'll oh, do this, do that. And just some crazy stuff like I never knew. He told me to make, do a blue red mix to put down into shade the, the my dwarf uh, king's cape uh, for the, the oath mark to give it sort of that purpley, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. I would never have thought of that. And no, uh, no, it's 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 the one that doesn't immediately spring to mind, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm looking at I've got I've got twenty guys. Uh, they're not uh, North Star. They're the um, Conqueror ones that um, he does his own range as well now. But the, I'm looking at the capes now. They just look so be much better. They look <laughs> they look rich. They look like a texture. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, just something as simple as that has made my stuff look better. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, you know, having somebody's, uh, you know, ha I think that's the key, isn't it? Don't be afraid to ask. Oh, absolutely like not. Said, no, no. You, yeah. took, you, you took that back, back I'm going to take that back from what you said at the beginning. 
I probably would never have asked other people. In fact, I, I didn't ask how they painted. Uh, I was a 14 year old boy, you know, blah, blah, blah. And in a war games club and all the military guys, they didn't really they, they play with you, but they didn't really tell you how to paint anything. They weren't in. You know, so. No, I was lucky at yeah. having that particular. Unfortunately, the modelling group sort of just dispersed in the end, and, and and they don't don't have it any longer, which is which is a shame. It is. It was it was quite a valuable resource in its way. Um, I, I think perhaps some war gamers didn't like them because they didn't game, and they thought there was something you know that was a bit odd about them. But. Yeah, let's let's be honest. We're all playing with plastic or metal figures. Yeah. Whether we put roll dice or paint them doesn't matter. That's true. That's true. I mean, yeah. I, again, I'm, I am so lucky working for North Star, though, because North Star have cobblestone castings. And, yeah. and, and as well, you're a big fan, too, aren't you? So I am a massive fan, yeah. You know, I, it couldn't be any better for me that, that cobblestone castings are under the North Star umbrella sort of thing. And, you know, uh, Mark, Mark Cobblestone's, uh, you know, quite a, 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 a hobby, well, a long hobby friend of mine. All right. Uh, who I've known, gosh, all right. Well, even before I worked for Foundry, I think I, I wrote him a, a, a very cringingly sort of awful fan letter at one point and very kindly responded. And we've been friends ever since, <laughs> which is really weird because it was fairly cringy. But there you go. I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, I've got some of his older, um, older sculpts as well from uh, oh, the Grenadier. Grenadier. Yeah, Grenadier stuff. So yeah. that's I've got a lot of. Uh, Bits and pieces from them, from uh, Forlorn Hope, who do them in the UK now. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's a nice chap, isn't he, the bloke who runs Forlorn Yeah, Hope. and I, I, I like the, um, I, I just love that, the aesthetic that they give. Yeah. I don't, I, yeah, so. And Mark's stuff is, Mark is a sculptor who really understands painters as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no. also he's very, he understands how the things are going to be cast and things like that. And when you when you're talking to him and you go, well, you can't do that because that won't cast. And you go, oh, 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 won't it? oh, OK. <laughs> and he knows without even, you know, without even going near a mould, he, he's so experienced and, and stuff. He just knows what will what will work and what won't. Uh, oh, that's quite, that's interesting. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I asked Nick if he'd, he'd be up for coming on to do an interview and I'm, I was told he wouldn't. So it's just fair enough. So. Uh, um, but yeah, no. It would be a nice thought, but no, I I doubt it. I yeah, doubt it. That's fair enough. You know, it's uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, I'm I'm doing it from a fan, like yourself. I'm doing it from a fanboy kind of place. So, you know, it's uh, he don't want to do that. He don't want to do it. That's fair enough. I respect his privacy on that front. But yeah, no, I'd love to be able to talk to him about stuff like that. But you're right. He's when I'm painting his stuff. You know, yeah. you're, like, you're like, wow, this is just so easy to paint. And that's yeah. what I, I find within his stuff, a lot of the North Star stuff, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I've, certainly the plastics, but the metal. I mean, I, I love metal. I do. I love metal. Yeah, me too. No, uh, no, me too. No, yeah. No. And, you know, Pete, there's if, I had, people... if I had to come down one way or the other, it would be metal. Yeah, me too. Um, don't get me wrong. I like the plastic stuff as oh, well. Oh, yeah, I love it. And I, I like, like... 3D, like 3D printed stuff. There's some yeah. beautiful stuff. Yeah. But... But yeah, if I had to, if I had to say, oh, you can only have one of them, I would go metal. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's just. Gosh, that sounds my very South London accent there, didn't it? And no, yeah. no P in metal at all. <laughs> <laughs> but it just takes paint better, I think, at the end of the day. But that's me. I think. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. I mean, I I've, just... had to paint, I've had to paint a lot of plastic stuff, so I'm not. I'm not that fast. But. No, no, no. But, but overall, yeah, because because all the Mark stuff is in metal he's only ever done a few plastic things it like for grenadier um you know if i couldn't have his stuff i, I, I you know i wouldn't it would be such a loss so i would yeah, yeah. I'd go for metal no definitely um but the, uh, the other thing that, that we were saying about different ranges and stuff the Frostgrave again i really like the range the fantasy stuff of them because again it is so huge yeah, there's so yeah. many different bits and pieces to it absolutely and also because that's done by quite a lot of different sculptors i yeah. quite like that although yeah. it's nice to have a consistent range i also quite like all the different people that have had a go at frost yeah yeah, right. yeah i mean i've you go back to the the rangers stuff i mean i really like the, i've got i bought all the ranger stuff and i really like that i think yeah. that mixes well in i think 
I think, you know, if you take all of those, look at all of the stuff that comes out of Nine Star, and I think it does just genuinely fit all together. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that doesn't. Um, now, one of the things I love is the flat, all the plastics that you can cross fertilize. Yeah. That sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? <laughs> no, I think you can cross fertilize. I mean, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> you can use them all for, di and you can have arms off of him or a head off of him, or and even the star grey stuff, people are doing all sorts of, you know, I, like you were saying, I did those few sort of conversions early on with dwarf bits and pieces. But people seem to have like gone completely mad and put all sorts of different stuff. And I thought, God, I hadn't even thought of doing that, you know, or they look, they'll put cultist head on or something else or a crossbow. Oh, it's just the, the way they all fit together. And, and weirdly, they were, I don't think they were ever really, that wasn't like the basic intention. That they would all be able to fit together like the frost grave and, yeah, and just, mark stuff it's just kind of the way it happened oh well, that's even better yeah i mean it's just uh, it's amazing that everything is sort of pulled in together that it's everything sort of merged and i mean i've saw it's what i was going to say is actually it's like i've seen people what's great about the sprues is you get all those extra heads and if you've got yeah. if yeah. you've got Actually, if you've got a, a Frostgrave box of wizards and stuff, you get a load of different heads in there. You get way more than you need for the 10. Uh, oh, gosh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think there were like 25 yeah, yeah. on each sprue or something. Exactly. Yeah. So you can yeah. then whack them onto different things. Yeah. And what, what I love is, as I see people, you know, at the moment, there's a lot of conversions out, you know, there's, oh, we'll go and get some Gripping Beast Goth Elite Cavalry and we'll take the head off and put the, you know, we'll put the, the, uh, the the elf head on that or we'll do yeah. this so we we'll do that and yeah so, i've got some i've got some plastic norman cavalry from oh gosh it's not bitrix one somebody was doing an early plastic normans i can't remember uh, would it have been bitrix or Alan, did atlantic miniatures do it i don't know anyway i've got some plastic that uh, they're yeah. waiting to have waiting to have uh, human heads different heads to make them rohir in yeah, uh, so, and different shields and stuff to, to make them look more Lord of the Ringsy. Yeah, there's a lot of guys doing the uh, for armored for armored cavalry. That was it. Yeah, yeah. doing Byzant um, Byzantine uh, armies like. Oh said. yeah, the ones from Fireforge. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah they're great, aren't they? Yeah, because I, I, I'm I was thinking maybe doing like uh, an elf Byzantine type esque army or something like that because I'm I'm similar to you that's fascinating it's a fascinating point of history for me as well so i love the fact that oh yeah i love yeah i can't get enough of the byzantines though it's yeah just amazing i mean yeah. especially as like people sort of don't really know much about them and you go well yeah rome fell in the in in the west it fell but in the east yeah, yeah. It on for another thousand years and people go oh did it yeah. <laughs> you go yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. That's right. yeah. No, no, it's just yeah it's just like yeah it's like your culture today is massively revolving around that. You just don't understand that that's that's the case. So, yeah. And yeah, yeah they have well, a great just... history of, of of betrayal and and all that kind of stuff running right through it and religious fanaticism. It could be like Game of Thrones, couldn't it? it oh, no, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. You know, yeah. The, the, the iconoclasm and all all that stuff and oh, it's just just completely yeah. mad. Yeah. Civil wars right at the end of the of the empire, and you go, look, uh, do you not understand? Look, the the, the Turks are knocking at the door. Why yeah, are you seems... fighting each other? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't seem to matter to them. They go, oh no, we'll carry on with our civil war. And you think, oh for goodness sake. Yeah, I know. But I'm the king of the world. <laughs> yeah, that's just right. Yeah, yeah, but you've got hardly any territory left. <laughs> yeah. Poor people, but there you go. I, I just stop themselves, could they? Yeah, I just I was just watching. Uh, a, quite an interesting uh, thing about the about them actually and, and uh, the, the uh, rise of the um, the caliphates and Muslim uh, oh yeah as yeah. they push the Sassanites Sassanites is it Sassanites Sassanids. Yeah. Sassanids yeah yeah well yeah they were taken out by the um, yeah by, by the Arab conquest as well weren't they that swept yeah. across but again that, that's what people again don't realize that the, the, the Byzantine Empire was was a block to the Arab conquest coming up. Yeah, they just stopped it. You know, uh, uh, and otherwise the Arabs would have carried on. You know, oh. and, uh, and they would have probably taken most of Europe. I mean, they took Spain. You know, yeah. and, they, and that was 
pure luck, luck in the Pyrenees that stopped them, you know, in Spain. So, yeah, yeah. it would have been a very different world if it hadn't been for the Byzantines. But there we are. We digress on the we did, it, we did digress, but never mind. Yeah. But no, those fireforged Byzantines are very nice. Yeah, no, there's there's a lot of good stuff out there, and, and it's yeah, good yeah. to see that people are using, you know, lots of stuff, and it's good to see them mm. painting it up and getting it up on all the different Facebook groups that. that oh yeah, I love it. I love the fact. Yeah, I mean, you could spend all day literally just looking at nicely painted stuff, couldn't you? Yeah, Instead yeah. of actually doing your own painting. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I did a lot of that. Yeah, when first, when I feel in proper poop the other day. Oh, the yeah. day. I was yeah. just staring at it, going, oh, that's nice, looking for some inspiration. And then, you know, all the silver bayonet stuff that's out there, like you said, and it's like, I need to do that as well. So I, I got... Yeah, oh. really. You see, I never thought I'd be interested in it. But it, it kind of sort of, it's a slight sort of seductive, I'm not quite sure what it is. I don't know if it's got that sort of, again, sort of dark fairy tale about it, like, um, like uh, Shadow Deep has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, so got, it's got that sort of gothic, sort of creepy feel about it, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I sort of, it makes me remember, it, I don't know if you've seen the film, The Grimm Brothers, but good. Yeah, yeah. If you imagine that good. Uh, but if you read the actual Grimm Brothers fairy tales, they're pretty gruesome, you know. Um, in Cinderella, she actually cuts her, the, the, one of them cuts her toe off, don't they? Oh my so, God, really? Yeah, yeah, to get the, their shoe into the, their, their oh. foot. The shoe. Yeah, it's proper grit. Yeah, she's like, takes her toes off to so oh, she yeah, like, that, that doesn't come across much in the disney no, 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 no. so there's there's yeah so it's there's a quite a dark side to those yeah things right yeah that people don't realize i think um yeah that's what it, it sort of tinkles those bones in me because i love napoleonics and then you know first of all i was like mm, mm, and then i thought oh and then i um i was lucky enough to get a reviewer's copy and i read it and i was like yep yeah, i'm gonna be doing that so uh yeah. yeah i've not read it i've not actually read it yet because i've only just got a copy of it uh, it's a lot less swingy uh than frostgrave and uh and that as well so that lot deep, less what lost lot less dice swingy than with oh the, i said oh what this yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 some people don't like the d20 do they yeah yeah I, I have no problem with it whatsoever i love it yeah, yeah. i love it. well because i come from yeah like yeah you know, d and role playing sort of games that a d20 doesn't seem like any problem but uh, uh, it's like, but no i love it i do like yeah but i like the combat in frostgrave but yeah it can go wild but the great thing about it is i think because it is so wild if, if you're in a hopeless situation sometimes it can dig you out of a real yeah. hole if you yeah. get a lucky 20. i know it's not a good thing to rely on but no, no. Know, but I'm, I'm doing the reverse. It. yeah and on the reverse you might have this uber hero yeah, yeah, yeah. and the and the little the little yeah. guy gets a 20 in it's uh, like yeah, good yeah. and it's yeah, like I, I, I like that yeah i like the fact that you, you can't ever be sure of what's going to happen absolutely i've had i've had many a le uh, 13 14 level uh, level character in ad and d slaughtered by bloody stupid innocuous monsters so uh, yeah. yeah, it's upsetting, but I get over. I got over it when I was. 40. I think it's char character building, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got over yeah. it when I was young. When I was a young lad. But um, so we are going to draw it to an end. But I am going to ask you one, one last question. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, probably a difficult one for you, but okay. I'm going to ask you what is your favourite range in nine in the nine star. Uh, uh, pantheon of figures what's what would you if you had to say that's the one i want and i can't have anything else which one would that be and that's a real tricky question but oh, if I you know. have to nail it down it's, oh, yeah it's not really a range can i have cobblestone castings that i think that's a range <laughs> <laughs> i'll go for that then yeah, yeah no, I, I i yeah okay well there we go because that covers a lot of a it, lot of a few sub ranges doesn't it it does i think i think we just we just count it as it is a range within it so it's a, it's a whole yeah I think, yeah it's it's on the sidebar yeah, yeah. where all the ranges are yes so i think i think that would be a, a fair way well, I, could, I could argue that i think couldn't i i definitely think so I, I, if i couldn't have that if i couldn't do all of mark's stuff i guess i'd probably go for for frostgrave because there's just so much in it yeah no actually yeah there's just 
yeah you could do so much you can you can literally do build armies out of it you can build yeah, especially if you tanks. count um yeah. if you count the ghost archipelago stuff in as well yeah because there's some great stuff in yeah, there the and all that stuff in there and the tribal stuff you know, yeah as techy yeah. looking guys no absolutely you've got everything in one range there that can you could do so much with and that's what i like about mine stuff but it'll be uh, interesting to see how the silver bayonet range what what happens with that because there's obviously quite a lot more of that stuff coming yeah out. well there's a lot of monsters coming out for it so that's quite good now I, I suspect in true joe fashion there will be a supplement at some point so i'm guessing so yeah i've not heard anything but i'm, yeah. I'm guessing there will be I've, no no i didn't do any photographs for that anyway so i was going to say i'm not slated to take pictures for it but um the only pictures i've taken are ones for our sort of publicity type stuff because you didn't have uh didn't have figures in the book um so all the photography i've done that is for just for, for use in publicity really um, yes but yeah you, yeah copperstone put me down for all of copperstone's ranges please fair enough i just the only thing the last thing i will say oh about, yeah uh, uh, uh about silver bayonet actually was i'm still a bit shocked that um somehow a game that hadn't even been released was put in for voting for best new system uh if by World War Games Illustrated this oh, year, oh, yeah, I, haven't yeah, seen, yeah. I haven't seen the results of that. Yeah. What, what? Uh, uh, Baron's War one, which is uh, really good. Uh, Andy Hobday and the guys over at Footsaw. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they won their best. But what was shocking was the fact that Stargrave didn't get put in, uh, which had been released, and a game that hadn't been released that nobody had played had was put in as a voting. So it'd be interesting to see. If, uh, I don't know how they pick what goes in do you know I don't yeah know. i have no idea no no oh, okay. no 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 just uh, just i was really shocked when i saw that i was like but i vote i voted for it because i haven't played it i haven't played baron's war i haven't played any of the games on there actually and uh, i just thought that's a bit weird um but yeah there you go that's my that's my 10th pence war games illustrated How are, they, are the results of it up yeah, they're all out. Sarissa won the best um, scenery thing again. I think um, I saw that because they've been put. Yeah, they they're yeah. quite good they're, at putting you know, on their stuff that they've yeah, done. Yeah, that's a fifth year or something like that. Um, um, yeah, uh, Baron's War one, and I don't, I can't remember all the rest of the stuff to be honest. I'll go and, I'll go and have a look. I'll yeah, it's all out there. But uh, yeah, so we will leave that uh, at the end, and I just like to say thanks. Uh, Kev for coming on. It's really appreciate. Oh, thank you, Matthew, for for inviting me. It's been a uh, a very entertaining chat. I have to say, one way or another. I really appreciate it, my friend. And uh, um, guys, I hope you uh, enjoy this. Um, hopefully, you know, in the future, we might be able to get you back on, Kev. Yeah. Uh, yeah. New stuff to talk about. It sounds like we can both uh, have a good chit chat about anything. To be honest, <laughs> I like that. Well, we have we haven't we haven't covered motorcycles yet. So. All right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh so that, that's awesome but yeah so guys um it's a good uh, afternoon good morning or good after good night wherever you are in the world and i'll, good see, night. Good, and I'll see you all later cheers are we done that's good yeah, yeah that's cool i'm just going to turn off this recording